Everybody says that blockchain technology is the future of our world. Bitcoin is hitting 2019 highs and the momentum keeps going. So you have to know that cryptocurrency is the future of finance. So now is the time. Many experts love to talk about how some kids made millions selling NFT. It's the hottest trend in the world right now. And as Time Magazine says, people are making millions on NFTs. We're told that it is the new gold. So in that way, it really is no different than gold, except that gold is a hard asset and Bitcoin is just a digital asset. They even say it is more valuable than any asset in our history. Faster than Google, faster than Amazon, Bitcoin was the fastest asset in history. Okay, okay, okay. This video will not try to dispute any of the above claims. I'll not try to prove that blockchain technology is in the future because nobody knows. I will not claim that cryptocurrency is going to become useless because nobody knows. I will not try to prove that different governments of the world would soon start to destroy cryptocurrency as some are already doing with regulations because, listen. Nobody knows. And that's the first point of this video. Nobody knows. Saying cryptocurrency is the future of money is as believable as saying you'll live till the age of 70. Maybe, but nobody knows for certain. China putting it in Bitcoin and this is what's really fueling it right now. Um, I don't know, you know. Now, let's assume for the sake of argument that blockchain is truly the future of everything. Does that mean if you don't invest in it now, you'll miss out forever? Well, that's what people who benefit from your crypto investments are saying. Act very quickly because we're moments away from a watershed moment in this market. It's an unprecedented event that, and hold on for this. These people persuade you to become a first mover because they either get you to buy some useless coins they're promoting. If you want to know the best altcoin exchanges, then click the link below. Or they ask you to pay $49 for some insider information. You see things like, act now, take the risk now, be brave now, so you won't regret in the next 10 years. With four simple words that have been whispered by the intrepid since the time of the Romans, fortune favors the brave. But that's not what history tells us about a new industry. You see, every meaningful industry in history of our world goes through four stages. You have the introduction stage, here, you have the growth stage here, you have the maturity stage here, and decline stage. Now, this entire lifespan of a new industry could take place within 100 or even 200 years, and any of these periods will come with different opportunities. The only kinds of businesses or industries which come with opportunities that suddenly disappear three years later are Ponzi schemes. Now, this is the point I'm making here. If blockchain technology truly becomes a thing, there would still be many opportunities in that industry in the next 100 years. Let me give you an example. The year 1993 and 1994 was the era of the first movers for the internet. Just as many smart people talk about Bitcoin being the future today, many smart individuals told the world that the internet will be the future back in 1993. Right. So you, everybody can have their own homepage, companies are there, the latest information. It's wild what's going on. You can send electronic mail to people. Uh, it is the big new thing. Now, here is the question. Does this mean that the opportunities to create wealth disappeared with the Internet in 1996? Not at all. In fact, most successful Internet companies didn't start until one decade after the Internet became mainstream. A few examples. YouTube. Facebook, Alibaba, Uber, and Airbnb. Even today, billion-dollar companies are still being created on the Internet every year. Think of TikTok. I mean, in the next 10 years, someone will still build a billion-dollar company on the Internet. So this idea that if you don't invest in a new industry now, you're doomed forever, is coming from people who want your money. Bro. You need to get in on this Bitcoin boom. Crypto, bro? In just six months, I've multiplied my money and the value. Let me give you another example. The 1900s to the 1920s were the years automobiles went mainstream. 
the way there is a lot of noise about crypto today was the way people made noise about automobiles in the 1900s. Even if you were on the factory floor assembling these cars, you knew you were part of something that was happening, something that was new, something that was changing the country. But if you make a list of some of the most successful automobile companies today, they didn't start in that era. Let's look at the top 10 most successful car makers according to their market capitalization. Toyota started in August of 1937, 30 years after the automobile became the next big thing. Volkswagen started in 1937, Ferrari started in 1947, and Honda started in 1948. In fact, 100 years after the automobile had become mainstream, Tesla started in 2003 and still made it to be the most valuable company in that industry. So what's the point I'm making here? When a new industry is born, opportunities in that industry don't come and go, as crypto agents make it seem. Opportunities in the telecommunication industry, for example, started with the landline in 1876. But that was 100 years before Steve Jobs founded Apple, and until this morning, the telecommunication industry still has many opportunities. So when people say blockchain technology is the future, I don't argue with them because I don't know. But when these people say, invest in crypto now or you'll regret it forever, I know they don't know what they're talking about. The only opportunities that come and go in two years are Ponzi schemes. If truly blockchain technology becomes mainstream and the market accepts it, then the industry will come with thousands of opportunities that will still be available in the next 100 years. Just as opportunities in automobile, telecommunication and the internet remain after many decades, they went mainstream. So far in this video, we've made two things clear. First, whether or not cryptocurrency would become the next big thing, nobody knows. Not even the smartest man amongst us. Second, even if certain people claim that blockchain is the next big thing, that still doesn't mean that you need to invest your life savings now. Because there were many things in the past different people had speculated would become the next big thing. Was there something about the nature of what Elizabeth Holmes was hoping to do, promising to do, that attracted you to this type of investment? Was there anything altruistic uh, about it? Not for me. I was looking to make money. <laughs> But I worked for a venture capitalist at the time, and um, he said it would be equivalent to Apple. If truly crypto creates a new industry, such industry would come with thousands of opportunities that would remain for the next 100 years. But again, someone would say, I want to take first mover advantage. I want to enter the market before everyone else. Well, truly smart people don't do that, and I'll explain with a story. It was the year 1899, Nikola Tesla was performing large-scale experiments at Colorado Springs, and from these experiments, Tesla developed a brave and audacious idea. He was going to inject electric current into the earth, right from New York City, and the whole world would be able to tap from such current. In other words, Tesla wanted to create a worldwide wireless system for electricity that can supply power to the whole world from New York. Earlier scientists like Marlon Loomis had written about such theory in 1872, but nobody had done so much to pursue the idea. Back in New York in January 1900, Tesla was able to convince his friend, Robert Underwood Johnson, editor of the Century magazine, to allow him to publish an article covering his work, and Johnson was willing to help Tesla. In February 1901, Collier's weekly article titled, Talking with Planets, Tesla described his system of energy transmission with the use of wires as using the earth itself as the medium for conducting the currents, thus dispensing with wires and all other artificial conductors. To gather investments for his new project, Tesla contacted and talked with his old friend, George Westinghouse. When Westinghouse wasn't convinced that Tesla had a good idea, he spoke with other rich venture capitalists like John Jacob Astor. Thomas Fortune Ryan and Henry O. Havenmayer, but none of these people believed in Tesla's idea. Fortunately for Tesla, he gained the attention of J.P. Morgan in November of 1900. Morgan believed in his idea and invested $150,000, which is about $5.1 million today. With this money, Tesla purchased 200 acres of land from New York City and began the construction of his tower in September of 1901. 
It is called the Wondercliff Tower in New York. Tesla experimented with his theory, got challenged by competitors, changed his initial plans and did many other things. And many months after, he needed more money to finance the project due to the plan changes. He wrote several letters to J.P. Morgan, but Morgan wasn't ready to burn any more of his money. A friend of mine started a company. I gave him $250,000. 60 days later, he comes back and says, look, I need another 500000 to make this work. I gave him the five hundred k. He went to zero 90 days later. That's $750,000. Please, a moment of silence for that money. And I'll never, ever, ever do that again. So I don't let emotion get in the way. Needless to say, Tesla was never able to generate wireless electricity. But this is just one example. All through his career, Tesla spent his time pursuing the first mover advantages. For example, in 1893, Tesla pursued his idea of the earthquake machine, hoping he could generate power from a steam-powered mechanical oscillator that would vibrate up and down at high speeds. That obviously failed. Then Tesla pursued the idea of wireless transmission of electricity in 1902. In 1907, the New York World reported on another of Tesla's innovations in which wireless telegraphy would trigger the detonation of high explosives at sea to generate tidal waves so vast they would capsize enemy fleets. History.com calls it the artificial tidal wave. While celebrating his 78th birthday, Tesla told the New York Times that he had come up with his most important invention, a military weapon that would accelerate mercury particles at 48 times the speed of sound, but that never became a commercial product. It's beyond our imagination now, but back in 1893, Tesla worked on the idea of the thought camera, a camera to capture human invisible thoughts, just as we have cameras that capture our physical bodies. I mean, Tesla spent all his life pursuing opportunities here, and that's a big contrast between him and Thomas Edison. For example, Edison didn't invent the electric bulb. The concept had been tested and proved to be valuable before he perfected it for commercial use in 1879. Edison didn't invent the kinetograph or the movie camera. He didn't invent Volta, the storage battery, or a power generator. Most of the things that made Edison a millionaire were things that had been tested in the market, things that had been proven to have an obvious practical use. Then Edison jumped in to perfect them, which is why he was a millionaire while Tesla died broke. Except you have a million dollars in the bank, you don't know how to spend, first mover advantages industries aren't for you. I do think people get bought into these manias who may not have as much money to spare, so I'm not bullish on Bitcoin. Thought would be, you know, if you have less money than Elon, you should probably uh, watch out. Do I have anything against cryptocurrency or blockchain technologies? No, 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 no. Would I ever invest in crypto? Most likely yes, if the market truly accepts the technology a few years from now. Since I don't have a million dollars I can gamble with, I am educating myself and waiting patiently for a second mover advantage. And if you worry that I might miss out on a big opportunity, my history books tell me that opportunity is like a bus. There's always another one coming. Thanks for watching.